Hi everyone, and welcome to a very special collaborative video with my sweet friend, Anne. She is over on Instagram on Paper Hearts Library, and her feed is just beautiful. And there's a whole array of literature and fandoms that Anne um, represents on her account. Um, and we have gotten to know each other over the years, and I thought we could have some fun, but kind of agonizing fun today. Um, I will link down below the video that inspired this was a collaboration between Tiffany of Beautiful Minutia and Dee from A Novel Idea, where it's instead of, uh, you know, kiss, Mary kill, it was read or reread, rewrite or burn. And so we have picked nine of our favorite books and we, we will take them three at a time and um, decide which one we would reread, which one we would rewrite, and which one we would burn. So you will hopefully enjoy watching us make these hard decisions. So Anne, thank you for being up for doing this. <laughs> I'm really excited, although I will say that I have my top three books in here. And so if all three of those get picked at once, it's going to be bad. <laughs> That's what I, I have those, you know, those very few tippity top books in there. I'm like, as long as, you know, one of them is <laughs> in each turn, if they're all in the same, it will be just very hard. <laughs> I know. Well, I'm, I'm interested nice to see. Most of these authors aren't living, so there's not really anyone to offend. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I don't think, yeah, I don't really think most of mine are either. So yeah, that works. Yeah. I think I have a like two or three. Anyhow, um, since you are the guest, I will draw your first three titles. I'm okay. scared. All right. So maybe I'll draw them slowly <laughs> one at a time so okay. you can process this. Okay. The first one is Cecilia. Oh goodness. By Francis Burney. Now, would you like to, would you like to share with the class? That's what I almost found myself saying. Um, Frances Burney, is her best book Evelina? <laughs> no, no, this is the question. This is like the thing that I talk about all the time for anyone who knows me. I'm just, I love Frances Burney. I could not get through Evelina until I think it was last year and I read Frances Burney um, in college. So it's mm -hmm. been a while and I just kept trying to get through it. I don't like epistolary novels, epistolary novels. Um, it's, it's not bad. By the end, I really liked it. There's just a really annoying subplot that drove me crazy. And I think that Frances Burney is much better as a prose writer. And I and it was her earliest mm -hmm. novel. That's like, if you stop at Evelina, that's like stopping at Northanger Abbey and not getting to the rest of Jane Austen. So that's my little, um, that's my little spiel about that. If you, if you weren't sure about Evelina, try Cecilia or uh, The Wanderer. Camilla can be a little irritating at times because there's a lot of misunderstandings, but there's a lot of good stuff in that one too. But that one yes. can be a little irritating, but try the other two, The Wanderer, Cecilia. Yes. Yeah. And I do think when you, when you are, when you like a kind of lesser known author, mm -hmm. um, it can be exciting for people to happen upon them. But then when you feel like it's not a representation of their skill, then it's like, oh no, like don't try that one. <laughs> I feel very protective of her. She's like, I don't know. I just feel like I, I just love her. Not as much as Jane Austen, but I love her almost as mm -hmm. much as Jane Austen. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's see if okay. the next one will be a Jane Austen. Okay. And it is. Oh, my. Anne of Green Gables. Oh, no. <laughs> I know. The Anne girl. Ah. Uh, I just. You know what's funny is I did not read Anne of Green Gables the book until I was 22 years old. Oh, wow. Yes, it was one that I'm so annoyed at my childhood self because I I started it when I was around 12 or 13 and I thought this is boring. Like, I don't want to read this. Yeah. I don't know what I thought was boring about it, but um, it's just, it's one of those books that I feel like crying whenever I finish. It's just yeah. amazing. It's beautiful. It's definitely one of my top three. I did read that one. Um, my mom read it to me when I was a kid, but I didn't read the rest of the Anne books. So I'm actually finishing up like the last couple, but I have an interesting story like that was Little Women. I did not read Little Women until 2019 because wow. I, and it's one of my top three books now, which is yes. hilarious, but I absolutely love it. But my mom took, uh, my mom showed me the nineties Little Women 
And I was so mad that Joe and Lori didn't end up together. I was like, I'm never reading this book. But my friend Ashley just kept saying, you've got to read it. It's one of my favorites. Da, da, da. And I was like, someday I'll get to it. And when the movie was coming out and, you know, everybody's talking about it, she was like, you have to read it. Like, you can't watch this new movie before you read it. And so I did. And I just fell in love with it. And I, I love Amy and Lori. And I'm totally like team Amy and Lori and like Professor and Joe. I'm, I'm good with that now. <laughs> Yes. No, I, I, I agree with the reasons that Joe turns him down for. She's like, yeah. we would fight all the time. Yeah. And Amy is so much more suited for the yeah. society life. And yeah. that's one thing I really love the Winona Ryder Little Women, but it's mm -hmm. actually tied with me, um, tied for me with the 2019 one, because mm -hmm. I love how the 2019 one, it basically helps you give Amy and Lori a fair chance. Yes. Um, and yeah, I just think it, they're apples and oranges. Like the yeah. 2019 one is like whimsical and ethereal. Yes. And the 1995 is lively and cozy. And yes. Yeah. And I just, I really love them for very different reasons. I okay. actually like, I actually like Joe really, really well. As uh, Winona Ryder's Joe. I really like her, but I like yeah. Amy in the 2019 one. But anyway, okay. What's my yeah. third? No, I agree. And I always will prefer Claire Danes as Beth. Yeah, and like Susan Sarandon as Marmy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for uh Francis or what's her name? Anyway, who plays she plays Amy in the newer one? Oh, um, oh gosh. I keep yeah, playing. I just lost it. Yeah. It'll anyway, she's it. great. She's great. She's a great actress. <laughs> yes. Okay. The last one is okay the wanderer by francis birdie oh no so we have cecilia by francis birdie anna green gables by ellen montgomery and the wanderer by francis birdie i hate my life <laughs> <laughs> okay well i mean anna's one of my favorites of all time so i'm probably gonna have to say i'm gonna have to save that one reread i think it's like if you have a really serious emotional yeah connection um sorry Florence Pugh that's her name just Florence Pugh you. yes yes <laughs> oh my gosh I cannot believe I have to choose between the wonder and Cecilia oh my gosh so I was thinking that I could rewrite Cecilia I won't give any spoilers but mm -hmm. there's a small like I feel like the ending is good like it's very satisfying but I just feel like it's a little melodramatic there's some things that I feel like mm -hmm. I could rewrite that Okay. But yeah. the wonders of burn, that's kind of one of my favorites. <laughs> oh my goodness, why did this have to happen? I know. I so like this in the wonder, like almost equally for different reasons. And it's kind of is it one of those situations where whenever you would finish reading one, you're like, no, this one is my favorite. But then yeah. when you finish reading the other one, you're like, no, this one is my favorite. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. I like them for different reasons. The Wonder is so cool because you do not know the heroine's name for like half the story. She is oh. escaping the French Revolution. She's in England. So it's not really about the French Revolution, but she's just escaped it. That's how it starts. And she was supposed to meet up with somebody. The person isn't there. And she's got the secret. So she's like, I can't tell anyone my name. I can't tell anyone anything about me. And she's a woman in the 18th century trying to survive. So she kind of has to depend on the kindness of strangers. And she's kind of like overstaying her welcome at this uh, manor house. And then she has to find various, like things just get worse and worse for her. And she's like trying to find work. And so wow. it's all very wow. interesting. I think I'm going to have to say as much as I love Cecilia, because it's like the swoony, fun, pride and prejudice one. Uh-huh. I think I'm going to have to say burn it and maybe rewrite the wonder because it is a bit long at times. So I could re I could like trim a few things in the wonder, but man, this is tough. I think that's I what I'm going to go with. So this, maybe Cecilia is slightly more bright and sparkling, but the wanderer left maybe more of an indelible mark yeah. on you. Yes. Okay. And I just really like, I love the romance in Cecilia. Like it's very swoony and fun. Mm. It's very like kind of pride and prejudice ish. But there are some things that irritate me about the guy sometimes. Yes. Just like, eh. But the guy is just like the perfect noble sweet guy in The Wanderer. Like, you're just like, there nobody's this good. But he's really like pure, good, noble, wonderful guy. So I got to save him. Yes. I, I can kind of burn the Mr. Darcy-ish guy because he has some times where he's a little irritating. So sorry. <laughs> 
You did it. You made it through your first, your first turn with two Francis Bernie books. I am so glad this isn't real though. My, my book is over there safe and sound. And now in the ebook era, it's like, if a physical, if all the physical copies burned, you know, we still have that as backup. Exactly. All yeah. right. You ready? Now it's your turn. As ready as I'll ever be in. Take my basket. Okay. Go one at a time. <sighs> Betsy's Wedding <laughs> by Maude Hart Loveless. Betsy's Wedding is, you know, at the end of The Return of the King, how there's just prologue, uh, not prologue, epilogue after epilogue after epilogue. Yeah. And I people griped about that. And I'm like, I would have loved it to be three hours longer of epilogue. Yeah. That's yeah. what I love. And so Betsy's wedding is just the payoff for all of the hopes and dreams you've had for the high school books. And Joe Willard, you do get to interact with him some, you know, varying amounts in the high school books, but you just get to see just the depth of his personality and you get to see him be fun uh -huh. and serious and sensitive. And it's just such a treat of a book. So it's basically like one long, wonderfully indulgent, luxurious epilogue. <laughs> yes. And oh. spectacularly fun because she was head over heels for her husband in real life, Delos, and Joe is based on him, even though they didn't meet in high school. And so just to know that she was so smitten and also apparently um, he was self-conscious about his looks. He didn't think he was very handsome, which when I see pictures, I'm like, lust, you were a looker. Okay. Um, <laughs> She goes out of her way pretty much every time she, you know, introduces him in a new chapter just to talk about how handsome he is. And I just think that is Aww. so sweet. Yes. That is really cute. I really need to finish the Betsy Tacey series. I love what I read of it. Now yeah. you may be like, I've got to get to that book. Cause I just love, if I love the romance, I will read a whole book about just what's happening. The epilogue, you know, just like, let's just see things go nicely for these people. Yes. And, oh, and actually I just had a brainwave that mm -hmm. part of, I think why I enjoy it so much is that the drama of the story is about learning to be an adult, an independent adult, oh, nice. as opposed to kind of learning to get along with each other. There are a mm -hmm. couple misunderstandings, but it's more like, it's just really hard to be a grown up, actually. <laughs> um, <laughs> so so I, yeah. <laughs> yes. And so she has some cooking mishaps and, um, there's some matchmaking that she and Tacey are doing and it's just very, very fun. Oh my goodness. Okay. I really want to, I really want to read this now. Okay. Let's, let's shake up the basket and see what's okay. going to come up against this. I'm, I have butterflies in my stomach. I'm not joking. <laughs> I totally understand. I'm just so glad this isn't real. Um, <laughs> okay. This is a, uh, this is rough magic by Mary Stewart. Okay. This is good. Cause that's a different, a very different kind of book. Okay. Different feel. Okay. Yes. Maybe not. This Rough Magic is a, I feel, I think that Mary Stewart's books are like mm -hmm. Daphne du Maurier light. They're kind of, uh -huh. um, there are a couple that are tense, but they have some suspense in there, some romance. I think she liked to call them romantic suspense novels. I think okay. that might be Phyllis Whitney. I might be getting them mixed up, but it's really fun because it is, uh, well, she's on holiday in Capri and uh -huh. this Rough Magic is a reference to the Tempest. So there's lots of um, love for Shakespeare that is in it. And um, it's just a rollicking good time, I will say. Well, I might have to start with them. I've been wanting to get into Mary Stewart. So I think I'm going to save your list because there's quite a few that I haven't read. So I'm going to have to pull from your list. <laughs> yeah, I think you would because I know you do enjoy when there's a good romance in a story, yeah. even if it's not purely a romance on its own. Yeah. Um, and we've talked about, you know, it's, I think, People can mean romance as a positive thing, but so often when I hear people talk about Austin, they'll be like, well, she's just romances and they're using it as a reductive term. Yeah. Um, so yeah, which one it's, a, it would be okay if she was just romance, just mm -hmm. romance. Um, but two, she's also not. And so I love that. Um, Mary Stewart's are like romance plus mystery plot. It's cool. Yeah, that sounds fun. Sometimes I struggle with mysteries because I mostly do my reading before bed to relax. And if it's too intense, oh. then I'm just like, oh, I'm never going to sleep. Yes. That was my problem with The Woman in White. I actually had to just knock it out on a weekend, like sitting with an ambience when I didn't do anything else. And oh. I feel like I have so many things to do that so much of my reading is before bed. But when I can read a mystery, just like 
on a Saturday afternoon. I'm like, this is amazing. <laughs> yes. No, I understand that. And there are certain mysteries that um, at nighttime, I will not read them. So yeah. these thankfully feel pretty safe. Nice. Well, hopefully it won't be too hard for you to choose between that and the next one. I'm getting ready to pull up the next okay. one. Oh no. It's Pride and Prejudice by Jane. Ah. <laughs> like that last one that always gets you you know okay I actually think I know okay. it just came to me okay for right. reread I will pick Betsy's Wedding okay even though I know that the more perfectly written novel is Pride and Prejudice it's a yeah. work of literary genius whereas yeah. Betsy Tacey is like darn good storytelling but you have um, to go the sentimentals too exactly and that's where there's more warmth in that yeah. So rewrite, I will say, I, um, and I feel like we've talked, you know, kind of at length about the different Austin men that appeal to us. And yeah. I'm firmly George Knightley. That's like, he's my guy. Um, yeah. And Mr. Darcy is, I know that he is a type, like, and I get it. There are people like that. And um, I mean, my husband himself, when he comes home from work and is happy to see me, he goes, hi, that's like him happy to see me. So and he tells me he's like but inside like I feel like I'm yeah. I'm emoting more and I'm like you're not yeah. you can't change you so I don't expect him to like act fake you know yeah so he does have a bit of that and so I get it but as far as my temperament goes when I'm reading a book you know I yeah. want someone more expressive so maybe um I know I think I heard someone say that there are no Austin scenes where it's just men talking together without women oh yeah so, that's true yeah so maybe I would actually enjoy kind of I know you do get a breakdown from hit uh, uh of kind of the timeline of his affections um mm -hmm. towards the end of the book but I don't know maybe before after um the first you know she is handsome but not tolerable or she is tolerable but not handsome enough to tempt me maybe yeah. after he's changed his mind and decided you know she has fine eyes just talking with Bingley, something that like would that. be great. Yeah. So it is, I mean, I, I don't, I don't want the Pride and Prejudice lovers to come at me. This is a, not at all me saying, you know, it's a flawed novel, but that yeah. could just be the icing on the cake. Well, it's and almost then, like a bonus feature, you know, like DVDs, they have like bonus scenes. Exactly. It's like a bonus scene. It's not really rewriting yeah. bonus oh, scenes. <laughs> ooh. And okay. Included in there would be who told Lady Catherine the rumor that Elizabeth and Darcy were going to get engaged yes the great debate the I great think, debate. I think it's like Mr. Collins or Caroline Bingley maybe but I don't know it would just be I want to see that I like this rewrite right? yes but I do I actually it's funny I do think I mean my username on Instagram is no compliments to your mother I do think <laughs> that's my favorite scene in the whole book it's just <laughs> these two powerhouses yes. of women and even though Lady Catherine outranks Elizabeth Elizabeth has such res respect for herself yes um, and I love you know he is a gentleman I am a gentleman's daughter therefore we are equals yeah oh so good <laughs> um and then I think unfortunately sorry this rough magic I would burn this rough magic oh uh, purely because I'm like anytime in the mood for Pride and Prejudice Betsy's wedding I'm not always in the mood for um this rough magic I understand it's hard though <sighs> so hard I know all righty here we go. I'm nervous. The first oh, one yeah. is okay. You didn't get two of the same series, Anne of the Island. Okay. I have to say that the scene at the end when Anne realizes her true feelings when someone is in mortal peril, I cry buckets. So, I know. That book is like very tied for me between um, Anna Green Gables and Anne of the Island just because. Yes. Anna, Anna of the Island is just so fun. I love all the school scenes and I just, oh, I love that ending. I love that ending so much. This is going to be tough Anna, though. Anna of the Island is very light academia. Yeah. Um, and, and also I just love that Ellen Montgomery decided to give her kind of the knight in shining armor and then her realizing, oh, wait, actually that was kind of my ideal from books, you know, but yeah. not this, this real man that I know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Okay. Right. Second I'm book sorry. is Pride and Prejudice. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> It'll 
it'll be interesting to see what we both by the end had done with Pride and Prejudice. I know. And last but not least is Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. I was very intrigued to see that this was the Harry Potter book that you picked because it is definitely kind of uh, no one's favorite. <laughs> it's kind of no one's favorite. So I would love to hear what is it about Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix that particularly draws you in? Well, I am a Ravenclaw, kind of a Gryffindor Ravenclaw. I'm kind of very much on the border, but I definitely feel like I really embrace the creativity of Ravenclaw and just like the quirkiness. And I just yes. love learning. If someone could just pay me to go to school forever, I would do that. Yes. <laughs> so um, so I love that there's more like Luna Love Good. You're getting some like Ravenclaw stuff. I love, I just love the Order of the Phoenix. I love the Room of Requirement. And I don't have a problem with angst. So many people have a problem problem with angst and maybe it's because I was kind of a Marianne from Sense and Sensibility in high school and I can laugh mm. at it now but I was like very angsty like <laughs> I mean I if, if there was a guy that I like I remember one time that I couldn't like figure out what was going on with this guy and I finally like wrote him a letter pouring my heart out and his response was like oh thank you for your email I did kind of like you at first but I don't feel that way about you now man that I like I cried I journaled I watched like all the sad movies I like oh. I had like a whole Marianne pity fest for myself so like even though I guess it's not quite so angsty like in a romance sort of way like I don't mind the angstiness because I sort of laugh at like oh yeah that was how I was as a teenager too like yes. everything was a big deal <laughs> so while I wasn't quite like Harry can be a little annoying angsty I, I suppose I was too but like yeah in sort of like complaining about things I sort of feel sorry for him and I just feel like I get where he's coming from in this book he feels very alone and he's got to do this big thing and he's just like you know someone's just died in the Triwizard Tournament so like I guess I just really like have empathy for him and it doesn't bother me that he's angsty which I hear that's like the number one complaint for most people I love um I love the um Oh, what is it? The house, like Sirius Black's house. I love um, oh, Grimmauld Place. Yes. Yeah. Even though it's like a really, and the ending is very sad, mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. There's just something, and I just have such mm -hmm. great memories of getting this at the midnight release and mm -hmm. like staying up late to read it, and just it's just it's very it's just my Harry Potter book. I just love oh, it. <laughs> yeah, and I, I do. I agree that people come down too hard on Harry because. <laughs> excuse me, have you ever lived as a Horcrux for your whole life? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, I, I would have any too. Um, so yeah, he's just, it's so funny. It's already very emotional to be a teenager and then have pile that on top of it. Um, yeah, it's my, my thing that I really struggle with is Professor Umbridge. She, it's just this combination of having a sugary sweet appearance, yeah. but then she is pure evil and it's so, and like the little like fake laugh that she does. Um, I mean, yeah. Imelda Staunton, just they could not have cast it more perfectly. I know. Ugh. Oh, I hate her too. Like she is my, of all the villains, she's the one I hate the most. But I think yeah. she's also, that's partly because she's realistic. I think a lot of people in some point in their life, there's maybe been some authority figure who seems very nice or very respectable. And it's not Voldemort, you know, it's somebody who seems like, they should be legit, but they're yes. actually kind of cruel. And no, it's, it's very true. I think you we've all, whether in school or something, there's just like you or, or work, you just all, I think everyone has come up against someone that like has some sort of power over you. And it's like, you can't really do anything about it. And they try to act like they're nice. And you're like, yes. but I know what you are. Yes. So I think for me, it's the satisfaction of how wonderfully she is sent off by the end by like I'm, Fred and George. I'm sorry, professor. I must not tell lies. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, exactly. yeah. And Fred and George. I love Fred and George. I think it's okay. so satisfying. And I just remember seeing that movie in theaters too. And everybody yeah. cheered. It was, I watched it on opening night and it oh. was just like, everyone was cheering in the theater when she was sent off. And that's amazing. So I, I, I do love it, but oh man, I was going to say that, oh, I was going to say that I would rewrite Anne of the Island because I do like the movie version um, instead of Roy Gardner. And now I can't even think of his name. The guy, Morgan Harris. Old, Morgan Harris. Yeah, I was going to say, maybe we could just rewrite it to be like the movie because I really do like the way that the movie portrays it. I um, honestly like, okay. I think I like it better. Gilbert, I, you know, I'm glad she picks Gilbert, but I don't think it would have been wrong for her to say yes to Morgan. And, and like, 
Emmeline and she have such a connection. Yeah. She would have been just the sweetest stepmother to Emmeline. Oh. Yeah, and he is very much kind of the Mr. Rochester kind of guy that I think she probably dreamed of. And yeah. it's interesting because Ellen Montgomery was a big fan of the Brontes and she and Alcott. Oh. And she, I think she was an Austin fan too. So you can like see little bits of that. I know she was definitely mm. a Bronte fan. She loved Jane Eyre. So I, I feel like the fact that they did that for the movie was very appropriate because it feels very appropriate to sort of Ellen Montgomery's life. And yeah. I, that's like one of the few changes that I feel like was really good. So I think I'm probably going to go with that rewrite because I was going to say if the Harry Potter, if I rewrote it, it would be uh, rewriting that I don't want to spoil it. Hopefully everyone's read Harry Potter. Pop I think I'll just put, I'll put a warning at the beginning. Spoilers for all the books listed in the description. It's okay. just too hard to do this without spoiling if them. i could bring sirius black back i could but it's just oh. so hard to burn an Anne book i just oh my gosh yeah. i just don't know i pride and prejudice is the reread for me like yes. i could never i could never yes. <laughs> i could i could rewrite it the way that you were rewriting it but i'm gonna just keep it intact um yes but i'm just really struggling between these two. Oh, oh my goodness i think it's just Anne just means more Anne and gilbert mean more to me so i'm just gonna rewrite mm. that the way it is like in the movie Yes. um with Morgan and then sorry sorry Harry Potter I wish I could save Sirius but it's gonna have to go and I mean <laughs> I cry buckets so much in the second Anne movie I cry when she sees him at the train station yeah and it's like her heart just gets ripped out and stomped on because she realizes yeah. like I made such a mistake and then she goes to her lonely dorm room and um and then at the end, you know, when Minnie Mae spills the beans, it's just, I, I kind of love like sobbing while I watch it. <laughs> yeah, me too. Oh, I love it. Gilbert is my ultimate book boyfriend forever and ever. Yes. Like he will just yes. always be my favorite. I love him so much. And I just, as much as I love the movies, I need the book version and I need the movie version. See with Harry Potter, I love the Order of the Phoenix movie. So I'll just watch the movie and let the book go. <laughs> yes. Well, that's why I'm excited for you to get to know Joe Willard more. I know he will never replace Gilbert, but he to me is like he's the Gilbert Bly for me. But oh my gosh, he sounds great. There. Yeah. He sounds great. I really need he to is. get a look at our hands in these. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, okay, you're gonna draw three for me now. Okay. Shake my basket. Okay. <laughs> Two are caught together. All right, we've got. Death and Holy Orders by P.D. James. Okay. It's just, it's a perfect mystery. It's very, and anything to do with church politics and a mystery, something about the romance of it, I'm just, I'm fully on board with. <laughs> nice, nice. I have never read P.D. James, so you've definitely yeah. got something to check out. Yeah. Um, okay, this is The Daughter of the Forest. <sighs> okay. How do you pronounce her last name? Juliet... I think it's Marillier. Okay. All so, right. Yeah, that's the retelling of the seven, the seven swans, I think is what it's called. Oh. And, oh, oh my goodness. That just, I still have a hangover from that book two years later. It's just, is it fairy tale-ish then? Yes. Or? Okay. And it's set in like ancient Britain. And oh yeah. And so there's a really kind of an intense connection with the natural world. And it's just the characterization is that definitely takes the front seat in the writing. Oh, oh I love perfection. that. Perfection stories, definitely. Is it, does it have magic or is it? Kind there, of yeah, it's kind of like, well, I, I, I think all of them, no, some of them are Christian priests, but some of them are Druids. So it's kind okay. of like using the elements of the natural world as okay. powers kind of thing interesting okay yes. this one I remember you talking about this one there's so many books that you talk about that I, I'm forever putting on my TBR I'm doing a little TBR clean out I don't know if you saw on my on uh, my Instagram oh, but yes I have 107 books that I have not read that I own and then so it happens I can't get through all of them this year but I'm trying really hard to like every other read or so like really Ooh. tried to go pick from it. And I have some like ridiculous Twilight knockoffs from 10 years ago. Like it's a whole, like I've got some great classics. Like I've got Tom Jones, which I've been wanting, I really do want to read that this year. Oh, but yeah. then on the other side of the spectrum, I've got like Hush Hush, which is some fallen angel thing. And, but I'm just oh, making my myself do like three to three to five, three to six chapters with every book. And wow. if I ENF it, 
then it's got to go because I don't, I need room for more books. <laughs> wow. Well, that's exciting. I'm sure it's challenging, yeah. but then like you said, you need room for more books. So exactly. it's almost like this game because like I was, someone had given me a whole pile of books wherever go like 10 years ago when I was first getting into YA and it was, um, uh, Nick and Nora's infinite playlist. And I thought I could like it, wow. but I just, it was a little, I don't know. It was just, I just didn't like it. And mm-hmm. I gave it six chapters and I was just like, this is hard, but you know, I'm never going to pick it up again. And yeah. so I'm just kind of like tired of like books that I've DNF or books. I go, Oh, I'll get around to that. It's like, it's either got to be read and I love it or just mm-hmm. DNF and out the door. So it's like this game. Yes. Oh, very cool. Burn. Yes. <laughs> burn, cause I'll donate it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Wow. This last one is Pony by RJ, and I have no idea how to pronounce this. I think it's Palacio. Palacio, okay. Oh. okay. I don't know. So that's, this is a good about. variety. So it's um, um, Death and Holy Death, Orders. Yeah. Daughter of the Forest mm-hmm. and Pony. So tell me about Pony. I don't know anything about it. Pony is a really special middle grade. I, I think it's, I'm, I consider it my second favorite read of last year. And mm-hmm. it's one of those that if you had told me the synopsis, I would have been like pass, but it was the group read for middle grade March. So I gave it a try and I could not put it down. Once I started, it is about a 12 year old boy whose father is taken off in the night by mysterious strangers. And he has a, um, an imaginary friend who is a ghost. Um, and he goes and tries to rescue his father, but it's so, um, It's just this perfect concoction because it is this adventurous Western style story, but there's so much deep reflection and internalizing of emotions and Mm -hmm. um, kind of just uh, the bigger questions of life and ethical questions and dilemmas. It's, yeah, it's incredibly moving. Yeah, it's just, it's amazing. Is it set in the old West? Yeah, I mean, I think it's 19th century. Okay. Um, and it has a, such a beautiful ending as well. Oh, oh yeah. Wow. Oh, okay, good. you got a tough, you got a tough one. Okay. Death by Holy Orders, Pony, and Daughter of the Forest. Okay, well, definitely I know right off. This is this is good because Death and Holy Orders is my least favorite out of those three. Okay. So I will burn Death and Holy Orders. It's interesting because I do consider mysteries one of my favorite genres, but then when I pit them up against favorite novels, I'm picking the novels. Um, Probably because I feel like maybe they're just like cozier and more comforting and. Yeah. 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 That's interesting. But yeah, I don't get quite as attached to the characters. The only ones that I get as attached to the characters are the Inspector Lindley mysteries. Um, okay. <sighs> <laughs> I think I'll say reread Daughter of the Forest because the reading hangover that I have from that two years later just can't be beat. And I just, so the crux of the plot is that um, she has a wicked stepmother and her stepmother turns her six brothers into swans. And she has, um, well, maybe she doesn't have a limited amount of, oh, I think she does. She has two years. I think that's what it is to knit them um, shirts out of, it's some kind of prickly weed and she can't speak for the entire two years. Oh, wow. Um, yes. And so she can't communicate to anyone. She, you know, she has to run away from home because the wicked stepmother would just murder her if she stayed at mm-hmm. home. And so she has to just be taken in by the kindness of strangers but she can't communicate any of this. Um, and okay. Talk about swoony romances. Like my heart was pounding. There's a speech towards the end of my end of the book that just, it's like, okay, the letter in persuasion, it's like that level of romantic. Oh my goodness. That's like the best letter ever. Yeah. Awesome. Right. Oh, so, okay. And also it's really, okay. I have to say that. I think in an era that either intentionally or unintentionally doesn't really laud um, kind of super masculine men, Mm -hmm. it's really just, I love the men in these stories are very masculine. Nice. Um, And so they're like outdoors men and they go and they hunt and they always know how to like keep the women safe. Um, 
except when there's another kind of more sneaky person who's <laughs> who's going after them. But yeah, I just love the men are very masculine. Um, okay, and then I mean, I don't know what I would rewrite about pony. Maybe I would make it a little bit longer because since it is yeah. a middle grade, I think it's around 250 pages. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's fair. Make it a little bit longer. I like this adding the scenes because then you don't have to really mess with anything. It's just like yes. more of what you love. Yes. Yeah. That's it's probably cheating, but that's what I'm doing. <laughs> I'll allow it. I totally will. <laughs> okay. Your final three. Oh goodness. All right. I don't even remember what what's yeah, left. Sensibility. Okay. Oh. And then the fellowship of the ring. Oh, goodness. Now for something completely different. Yeah. All right. And then lastly, oh, little women. Oh, goodness. Like well, at least like some of my, I think my, yeah, my favorite favorites got parsed out because I would say my top three books at this point in my life um, and have been for since 2019, I should say it's Little Women, Anna Green Gables and Pride and Prejudice. But yes. so at, at least we parse those out. So I have yes. to say Little Women. I just love that so much. I actually would like, I have so many books to get through, but I just really want to reread that because it's just, it's so good. I rewatched both movies um, all the time now. Yes. But I, really I think want to after watching the 2019 one yesterday, I'm said I want to watch the 1995. And yeah. I love yeah. also the, um, June Allison, 1940. Yeah, yeah, she's a great Joe. It's not, it's, it's like, it's not the best Little Women adaptation, but I love all the acting in it. Yeah, no, I um, really like that one. I watched it because of you and uh, Melissa both recommended it. And yes. I think I've seen every Little Women adaptation now, except for I tried the Catherine Hepburn one and it grates on my nerves, so I can't get through it. I know we've like, talked about that. Yes, I'm glad we feel the same way. There might be some minor one. Now, have you watched the BBC adaptation miniseries? Okay, that actually has, you're talking about the one that came out like 2014 or something? I think it was like, yeah, like 2016 or 2017. That sounds history. right. Um, I feel like it's a bit somber, but I like aspects of it. It has my favorite Meg and John, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes, because I don't like that in the 1995 one is too much through joe's eyes so like me, mm -hmm. you know meg and john like what a joke yeah um, exactly but it's not a joke to them like they're very mm -hmm. in love um, yeah i actually like their romance it's cute yeah it's sweet and then unfortunately i'm i think emma watson is great as hermione but i thought she was kind of forgettable as meg yeah she's okay and james norton is like so dreamy but they didn't really give him much to work with yeah I think it's a really hard story to give every sister her adequate kind of yeah. screen time character development. Different ones just, I feel like have, have bring out different parts of the story. Yeah. I have not rewatched the mini series, but I did enjoy it. I feel like it was a little dark, not dark, but just like kind of somber. I had like a yeah. haze, somber haze over it, but yeah. I really did like the actor who played Laurie. I, I think yeah. that Timothy Chalamet is just perfect as Laurie, but it, he captures like the youthful Laurie and, Yes. Oh, like what's his name? The guy in the '90s one. He, I think he captures like older Laurie Christian better. Christian Bale. Yeah, yeah no, Christian he's Bale. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, they both like oh. have aspects of Laurie that I feel like it would yes. they, they would make a nice pairing of like younger, older. But mm -hmm. um, but I did really like the Laurie in this one because he that actor reminds me so much of Jonathan Crombie and um Anna Green Gables. He has just yes. a certain vibe and a certain look like that. I so totally see that. I did like that. But yes. obviously, this is a very long way of saying there's no way I am going to do anything with Little Women other than reread it because I would like to do that for real. So we, yes. we put that aside. Tell me the other two now is Fellowship of the Ring and Sense and Sensibility. Yes. yes. Why? 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 I love them both for completely different reasons. Mm -hmm. um, I really struggled to pick. I didn't want to have like too many of the same author, but I always struggle to pick like my second favorite Jane Austen. Pride and Prejudice is just the one I read first. It's always going to have the most memories for me, mm. um, even though there may be elements I like of the others. But Sense and Sensibility just holds like a special place in my heart because I do think I was a lot like Mary Ann when I was younger. I was I like too. The, I like the sister relationship. Well, yes. I'm glad I'm not alone. I think a lot of teenage girls though can yes. identify with that. And especially yes. if you're a reader, you just sort of romanticize everything. You expect everything mm -hmm. to be like a book. You do. And 
Um, I was very into Wuthering Heights at the time. That was my favorite classic at the time. I think I read that when I was 16. And that was like my first like outside of, you know, Anne when I was younger or, you know, some classics that I read like more child children's classics. That was the first like classic classic. I read it for English class and I was just like enraptured. It's just amazing. So I was just, I wasn't in love with Heathcliff, but I, I probably could have been more toxically into him (laughs) at 16 than I would be now. So, oh goodness, this is really tough because also I I had to choose like my favorite Lord of the Rings. I would probably say in some Mm -hmm. ways, Return of the King, I would have, I, I almost chose that one. But mm-hmm. at the same time, I haven't reread that one in a while. And I just reread Fellowship of the Ring last oh. year. And I just, I love how cozy it is at first. And Dang. then we kind of the journey and I love Rivendell. So I think that overall, it is my favorite. And Tom Bombadil. I love those parts. Yeah. I do too. Everyone yeah. complains about how, how boring he's it is. But I, like, I really like him. I think he's, there's, there's something something really interesting. I know that he doesn't write metaphorically like C.S. Lewis, but I feel like there's still something, I don't know, like spiritual about it or something. Oh yeah. Like he's immune to desiring the ring and yeah. 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 No, there's some interesting things going on there. Yeah. I love it. Well, since I already saved in Austin, maybe I'm going to have to burn sense and sensibility, but I don't know. I think that, I, I think the only thing that I would rewrite about Lord of the Ring or Fellowship of the Ring is just there are some passages that drag on which I guess is the same as as uh the wonder too I think I'd probably just trim it up a little bit yeah. I think well the forest, when they're wandering in the forest that's my least favorite part I would probably just like, like make that a paragraph <laughs> and move on and the Council of Elrond chapter yes I would trim that like kind of outrageous movie. Yeah, I really hate to let go of a Jane Austen, but I don't think I could live without like Tolkien in my life too, oh, because I just love so Tolkien true. so much. So I, I think, yeah. oh, I'm so, I'm so sorry, Eleanor and Marianne. I feel really bad. And poor Brandon, although Willoughby, he can, he can burn. We're good. <laughs> We're good with that. <laughs> he can, he can burn slowly yeah. and painfully. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess that's my choice. <laughs> All righty. All wow. right. Are you ready? I, I, I gotta get, to, I gotta, you, you know, remember your last myself. three? I, I remember one of them. I know Wives and Daughters is in there. Yeah, that's, I, I bet that's going to be tough for you. I think that's probably going to be saved. I have a feeling. Okay, so Wives and Daughters. Okay. And trying to open this other one. Here we go. Waterfalls of Stars by Roseanne okay. Alexander. Which I don't know anything about. You have to tell me about this one and a town like Alice. So tell me about those. Okay. So Waterfalls of Stars is a nonfiction uh-huh. memoir about the author Roseanne and her husband. Mm-hmm. And he is offered unexpectedly a position as warden of the island of Skomer. Okay. And it's right off the coast of Wales. It's extremely isolated. And and they only take married couples. So they get married like the day before going. And wow. then they go live for 10 years. And it's just, as soon as they got there, she felt like she had always, she had always been longing to be there. She felt wow. such a, this unbelievable, it's like she kind of ached. Um, she felt so bonded to this island and wow. it was such a unique time in her life. They were dirt poor and they could only, you know, they would have to go over, you know, in a boat to get groceries or anything. And a lot of times the waters were too turbulent to do that. So they really had to be strategic. Um, but she just, it was, it was kind of a thin place. You know, she just had this deep spiritual mm-hmm. connection to the land and it's written in such a beautiful, beautiful way. Um, there are some sad parts. Like she talks about when there was a big oil spill. And so, you know, we hear about oil spills on the news. Well, she saw firsthand, you know, see oh, wow. drowning in oil. Oh, um, so sad. It's really sad. And so then it is, I mean, the cavalry does come and they have this amazing machine that is able to like suck up all the oil out of the water. Mm -hmm. Um, And there are puffins that are there part of the year. Uh, So yes, very cute. And um, then what was the last title? Oh, the last title. I was just going to say too, the fact that that's a memoir. I love when like real life is almost more enchanting or interesting than anything yes. you can make up. It's so cool when you know something like that's real. Yes. Uh, 
Um, oh, is it a town like Alice? Yes. Okay. So that one is, it's this epic World War II love story. And okay. it's an interesting way that it's told and that at the very beginning, you're meeting a character present tense. And then she sits down with, it's, I think it's like her financial agent. He's told her like she's inherited all this money from a will. And uh -huh. so then she tells him her story of being in Malaysia. It was Malay at the time during World, World War II. And there was this group of women that just through the exact wrong circumstances were taken captive by the Japanese. And they said, okay, we're going to walk you to this camp. And they walked, I think they walked something like 60 miles or something outrageous over the course of a week. And they get there and they're like, we don't have room for you here. You need to go to this camp. And this went on for like years. And wow. about, wow. and this really happened and about half of the women died. Um, wow. So it's really harrowing. This is not, it doesn't shy away from the atrocities of war. Um, yeah. And then the last third of the book is looking at events after that. And it just has the most beautiful, moving love story. Aww. So what am I going to do? Okay. All right. Actually, I will say. Okay. Wives and Daughters rewrite because it doesn't have an ending. So oh, perfect. It, it just breaks my heart. Elizabeth Gaskell died. She was like in the middle of speaking a sentence and just fell over. And right before that, she wrote a letter to her husband saying, I feel younger than I have in decades. And she suffered from poor health. And so I think that does happen sometimes when somebody is um, kind of has just more bit morbidity, you know, this yeah. just poor health where they're limping along, they'll kind of feel better for a little bit and, um, and then they just pass away. So that breaks no. my heart so much, <laughs> especially because I just wonder what other books would she have written? You know, Jane Austen was only in her forties, Elizabeth Gaskell, I think it was late forties, early fifties, just what else mm -hmm. could they have done? Um, so yeah, but there's not an ending scene. And even though it only lasts like 15 pages, it's still, it could, it would have been an amazing 15 pages. Oh, um, and then I do think I'm going to say burn a town like Alice, not that there's anything wrong with a town like Alice, but, uh, to, <laughs> to change a Mr. Elton quote, who can think of a town like Alice? when waterfall of stars is in the room exactly that sounds like a good choice <laughs> all right yay us we did it and we, we survived. did it and thank goodness all our books are actually on the shelves and this isn't happening in real life because i would cry <laughs> i know imagine if you just looked and there they were burning it would just be very upsetting <laughs> well um everyone i hope that you enjoyed watching this and were you outraged by our choices did you approve of them um, have you added some books to your TBR? Either way, I hope that you have enjoyed this. And Anne, thank you so much for doing this with me. Thanks for having me. This was so much fun.